everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. <sighs> Today is a video that I've been planning on making for a long time. We're going to talk about power cord safety because I've seen so many things and it, there was something recent that um, when I was visiting Louis Rossman, I, I went right across the street to eat at this restaurant and I seen some things at this restaurant that just made my hair stand up. It was just an accident waiting to happen. And it brought me back to thinking about this power cord safety video that I was going to make a long time ago. And so now here we are. We're going to do it. So anyway, guys, uh, power cord safety. Let's, let's get right into it. So you guys know that the number one thing uh, that we see when it comes to power cords is this right here. You're, you're taking a look at it. You're going to see yanked power cords. And that's the number one thing that we see. And usually it's not necessarily from this end, it's often from the other end. Now, when you're talking hospital grade power cords, they are made from usually heavier insulators, uh, molded power cords that usually have uh, molded, in, molded in strain reliefs. Um, it's really hard to yank a medical grade power cord, yet it happens. And it happens so often. So that is the number one thing that we see all the time is yanked power cords. It's wild. So one of the other things that you should be taking a notice of every time that you are walking around a hospital, not just when you're doing a PM, every single time you are in a hospital and you walk by anything that plugs in, take a look. There's a good chance that you see something like this. Now this is a creased cord, so it has obviously been pinched at one time or the other. Could be pinched in a wheelchair, could be pinched in bed side rails, could be pinched by the bed itself when they raise and lower it. Um, I've seen these power cords pinched like this all the time. Yeah, it might actually pass an electrical safety, but the internal structure of that power cord has already been compromised. It's done. That power cord, if you see a crease in it like this, get it out of service. It's done. Abraded power cords. Abraded power cords happen anytime a power cord is usually being dragged on the ground when casters run over it. These uh, type of things I find all the time whenever uh, hospital beds go up and down and the cord's caught between the scissor. A, bra a braided power cord like that, there is no saving it. You got to get it out of service. This is the most risky type of power cord failure that you can find. And it's abuse. It's negligence. That's all there is to it. Power cords don't naturally break down in this manner. So if you see something like this, yes, you should immediately remove that item from service. Immediately. But just the same, check other units in the vicinity. One of my rules of repair is if it happens to one, it happens to other. And it could be negligence on the part of one staff member, but there's a good chance that it's, it's just happening in one wing because maybe the pressure on staff in that area is so high. Who knows? But if it happens to one, check more, all right? This is negligence. Another look at it, another look at it. This is a cord that I actually found in service. So that's why I've got multiple images of it. All right, this one right here, you can see that this power cord here, I don't know why it broke down the way that it did, but you can see how the, uh, the power cord itself has separated the outer insulator. It is separated. Now the inside, uh, the inside uh, conductors, they're not exposed whatsoever, but here you can see it's European wiring code, the brown, the blue, and the green. And uh, this cord here is compromised. Have to change out the whole power cord. And there is a really good chance, matter of fact, it's a certainty that this one is hardwired. So that means you're also gonna have to have some sort of crimp terminals because it's a hardwired device. Happens, hardwired devices are all over out there. This is probably the most common yank that you see. Now this one here has been just yanked outside of a gland nut. So that outer, um, the outer hex that you're looking at right there, that one actually screws down, it clamps down on the outer uh, insulator of this power cord. So what happens is, is they yank it and it just gets past the rubber gland. So what you have to do is usually you can just loosen up the outer nut and kind of twist it and push it back in but you have to open up the side panel, which you can see on this device. I, I do have it open. You have to open up the side panel to make sure that the cord has not been yanked. So 
that it's, it's compromised any of the, the connectors or the wiring on the inside. If it's been yanked that hard, there's a very good chance that it has been yanked and maybe damaged some of the connectors inside. If anything is damaged, any of the, con any of the, um, the, the crimp on connectors or anything, then you need as much surface area as possible to handle the amperage of that cord for its rating. So if, if it's been yanked, compromised, twist the little fork, you have to change it out. So this right here is an indicator of bigger problems. So if you see a cord like this, you have to open up the device. You can't just shove it back in and tighten it back down. You have to open it up, check and make sure that nothing has been compromised. This power cord failure right here, now it might not be failed yet, but if you ever see a power cord like this, you need to do something. You have to do something. This is negligence for one. This power cord doesn't naturally happen like this. This is from staff winding it, winding it, winding it, and it's negligence. What happens is the conductors on the inside, they stretch when, when the cord is, is windy like that. And whenever you stretch conductors, they do break. I mean, they are uh, fibrous conductors. These are not solid core conductors. So what they're doing is some of those strands, as they twist, they're being stretched while other ones are being compressed. And that means that some of them are longer and some of them are shorter, which is why the cord maintains its coily shape. There's nothing you can do about this. You need to change that power cord. Now, I've seen where these ones arky spark and melt in half because you start breaking enough conductors in there, again, if you have so many conductors in a cable and some of those conductors break, you might have half the amount of conductor to handle the amount of current for that device. So anytime you see a power cord that's coily like that, check other units in your inventory because it's a good chance that that kind of negligence is happening throughout an entire department. But that is negligence and there's no fixing this. You have to change out the power cord. This is uh, one of the images that inspired me to make this video. Now this is when I went to visit Lewis Rossman. I was at the, uh, the chicken place that's right across the street from him. And as I was sitting there, I was actually getting pretty upset just even looking at this. This is, by the way, an outside bar environment. So that should tell you that there's a certain electrical code already recommended or required for being outside in a wet location. However, one of the things that you should take a notice of is right here is a power strip. Hmm. Well, that better be a GFCI power strip. For one, it's a wet location. For two, there's a reason why electrical outlets and kitchens are not allowed to be facing up, and that is for spills, because water or liquids will tend to collect in a, a straight up and down outlet. They're not allowed to be like that in wet locations. This is clearly a wet location. I am sitting right here on the edge of the bar. There, there is no curtain, there's nothing behind me. That is open air. So if it were to rain, it comes right in here, right on that power strip. And you can actually see evidence of it, both on the stainless steel countertop, you can see evidence of pooling water, and also you can see it on the corrosion for the, um, <sighs> What are those? Those coaxial posts that are right there on that um, power strip. You can see they're corroded. They're corroded because of moisture. So that is a big no-go, but that's not even what really inspired this video. Take a look on the back wall. Do you see that? That cable right there, that is what inspired this video because the people that put up this cable, and, and mind you, these are low voltage DC cables, that's fine. Do you see how they held those cables? And first off, right here is one of these forsaken power, uh, power taps. It's, it's an extension cord, but one, it's not rated for very many amps, and for two, uh, it is definitely not meant to be an outdoor uh, extension cord. Uh, outdoor extension cords have certain kind of polymers for insulators, and uh, that one is definitely an internal uh, power cord. Uh, but look at the cable on the back wall. They have uh, metal screws that are screwed into the cable. Now that is only DC on that back cable, but they have metal screws that are screwed in. And no matter what, it's definitely touching some of the, the inside conductors. 
because some of those screws are really holding by like down here at the end of the cable this guy right here he has no strain relief so whenever they got to plug it into these neon signs this guy right here is getting beat up and you can see it you can see it in the cable where it's getting pinched it's not that they're loose and it's sitting there no they're screwed in and holding it in very no go not cool and this is in a wet location it's outside so there's a metal wall that should be grounded and there's electrical which is tapped in and i mean there's just a whole lot of wow going on here um and it's on both sides and the best part is over here on the far side you'll see that it looks like they took the proper recommendations there's conduit and then there's a what a dual gang and that one does kind of look like a GFCI dual gang. So I don't understand why they didn't run an extension from the, out, the external GFCI, which is right there, down the bar counter, because then it would be GFCI ground protected. Nope, they ran a cable over here right above the sink, <laughs> right underneath the bar taps. Hold on, let me see if I got a better picture of this. It's just, it's, it's astounding. Well, right there, you can see a better picture of how it's pinching in on the cable. You can see right here. So they daisy chained um, power cords together. And this is some of the stuff that you see. It's just an amazing hazard. So right here, this is not only a wet location because it's outdoors. It's a wet location because underneath a stainless steel bar tap, they have a power cord, an extension cord. You see that? Right here in the middle, right underneath, right by the drains, they have an extension cord right underneath their stainless steel bar tap. It's absolutely amazing, which daisy chains over into this one, which then extends to the rest of everything. But uh, yeah, this is, this is the reason that I uh, wanted to create this video because a lot of people just don't understand and they're not on the lookout for electrical hazards. It's, it's one of those things you have to program yourself for. Whenever you're out in public, you should just take note and be cognizant that this stuff exists, one, for your own safety. But for two, when you actually go into a hospital and you are starting to do this kind of work, once you program yourself to look for problems and look for human error, you're gonna see it and you're gonna see it everywhere. And as soon as you point that stuff out and you get it remedied, we're all better off. The patients are better off. Everybody's gonna be better off. But you have to program yourself to look around and see these kind of things. You'll see every single one of the things that I pointed out someplace out in the wild. It's crazy. Anyway guys, uh, I just figured I'd go ahead and share with you guys some of the electrical hazards that I have witnessed myself floating around out in the wild and maybe I can inspire some of you guys to be a little more proactive in your own maintenance sweeps. When you're walking around, take a look. You're gonna find problems. Thanks for watching guys.